There are many disturbing things in this world and this video will probably be at the top of that list. What else do you expect when you record interviews with some of the world's most deranged serial killers to ever live? The lineup today highlights three monsters that hid away from the public, so join us. In 2017, a man named Manuel Vela was found guilty of slaughtering his pregnant girlfriend and carving out their unborn child and cutting it into pieces outside of a homeless shelter. If you couldn't tell already, this man had been suffering with a mental illness which is likely to be schizophrenia. The chilling interview shows his paranoia and delusions in full effect, where he calls himself the Antichrist and claims his father told him to kill his girlfriend and her baby and much more. I'm really God, I'm not lying. <laughs> Throughout the hour-long sit-down with Manuel Vela, statements about a mission from the devil in Christ to kill Katrina Rivera were harrowing. She knew the mission at hand, and she said she understands. She said, I'm going to die in 2016. Her grandma knew. Everybody was telling him and warning him everything, everything. He's gonna, you, you're going to die by his hands. To what point were you proving? First and foremost, to uh, defy every religion-based Politic, politi political, to defy every law of any God creation of a book. Uh, you understand? We, I understood, yes, that I was going to kill her. She understood that she had to die. Well, uh, accepted the fact that it was, it was going to come, and the kids didn't know a lot about it. They just had to act like we're just humans and say, that's fine, you know, mental illness rules, rock on, you know? So when, when yesterday did you take the baby out? I took him out about seven hours prior. I took, killed her on the 8th. You know, kept a little hour, six hours uh, to myself, just with her dead in the back seat, side of the road somewhere. And then that's why I uh, stood for a little bit. And that's why I cut her open when he told me to. When he told you to? Uh, the father, it's just. The same one who was to communicate with uh, Jesus Christ is one of you here. Do you think that you're possessed by the devil? Me? Yeah. I'm the Antichrist. So do you feel bad that your girlfriend and your baby are dead? I take it easy on her. So no. But um, I don't feel bad. Oh, right. When I was seven, that's when it's just a put in effect. Yeah, a lot. Mm -hmm. And through all that time, you hear these voices over and over again? Well, he take it you. and say, go left, and I had to go right. And I get, he's in an Asian spaceship or something. So you already... So I had to learn every process of it. how he really had to communicate. He said, go right, and I go left. And you did all of this with the razor blade? You did the C-section with the razor blade? Yes. What were your thoughts through that process? My thing just taking the baby, cutting it as if I was some... Was it savage or beast by myself? Yeah. How did you get her in the possession to do this? Did you guys agree to do this? Did she lay down on the bed somewhere? Talk to me about that. And, and well, I killed her at the house. We set this plan up about a couple, I would say 100,000 years ago. So what was her thoughts when you were cutting? Was she alive when you cut no, the baby No, she was out? dead. And how did you do that? She, she was dead about um, from nine to, to seven, I think. I, I think I put her open at 7-11. How did you kill her? I socked her and I choked her. And then the baby, once you cut the baby out, how did you kill the baby? I killed her, Katrina Rivera, right there. How? I strangled her. At the house? Yes. And then hours later you went to Edison and then cut the baby out? Yes. How do you feel? With all of this, you've completed your instructions, and you are the Antichrist, how do you feel about this that you've done now? I said remorse, that's it. 
why the remorse? That's the only taste of word that I just describe it. Yeah, I bet that's tough. God, yes. Did you cut her waist? Uh, yeah. Where on Edison did you cut the baby up? You said you went to Edison Highway, right? In a garden? Was it actually in a garden? No, it was right on the side, but... Side of the road? Yeah. But, like, up by what? By the mission, by the um, homeless shelter. Oh. And no one saw you? No. Was it in the middle of the day, at night? Well, I recorded it throughout the process. I was recording, yes. You recorded it? Oh, yeah. Like, with your cell phone? Yes. There isn't many known cases of matricide, but this young man has to be the worst one by a mile. 18-year-old Kevin Davis strangled his mother before hitting her over the head with a hammer and splitting her skull. He proceeded to put his hand inside of her head and swell her brain about before doing the unthinkable to her corpse. This interview is extremely graphic and disturbing, so viewer discretion is certainly advised. I asked my mother for permission to die, or rather kind of commit suicide. I wrote the note, and then on a whim, actually, I turned it over. It was a plan to kill both my mother and my sister, and my Franklin. That's always been a thing of mine, and I'm a bit of a pervert, because she had decided she was sick of this stuff, and she was going to go send me to live with my sister again. I tried to strangle her with a cord. That didn't work out too well. She started screaming, and so, I went to her room, opened a drawer at the very bottom to the right. I pulled out a hammer. I went back in the living room, and well, you kind of get the gist from there. But then she was still alive. I dragged her into the room, and you probably could really saw. So when when you dragged her to the the living room, I mean to the bedroom, you kept on hitting her there. Yeah, kind of. That's what the uh, yeah, that's when you reached in and grabbed her brain. Yeah, I kicked out of the bed. Then I just uh, that was kind of silly, but. Yeah, I just decided to reach in and kind of just, just do it. Is she your natural mother? Uh, yeah. logical mother? Yeah, actually she is my natural mother. I had always loved my mother, I guess in the wrong sort of way, but... You, you mentioned that you lost your virginity to a corpse. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What happened? Oh, uh, well, just last night, my mother, yeah. Okay, you, not somebody else. You talked yeah. about your mom? Yes. Before that, you had never had sex? Well, uh, I guess since I'm being yeah. quiet about it, I might as well tell you now. I, yeah, and it's on the note, too, the P.S. part. Uh, we used to have a gray cat named um, Claire. I strangled it. I drowned it, and then I cut it open. You know the rest. You kind of get the rest. Let's talk about the notes that you wrote. Uh, how many notes did you write? Three. Three. Uh, there was one in the living room. Yeah. That one was addressed to who? Desiree, my sister, because I knew she was, uh, she's a good girl, but rather sensitive. I, mean, I knew she would lose her head if she kind of saw that. Do you remember what the note said? Uh, keep your head. Hurry. She might still be alive, although I highly doubt it. Parentheses. Something along those lines. Yeah. But when mind. you wrote the note, you knew your mom was already dead. Oh, yeah, I knew it. Yeah, you know, so she was of, messing with, with Desiree by writing that, that she might still be alive? In my sick sense of humor. Okay. I was pretty well off my rocker by then. Uh, and then there's a second note in, 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 in your mom's bedroom. What did that one say? Do you remember? Chase me. Was that addressed to the police or, or to who? I, I was just in a, I was in a very playful mood at the time. There is a special place in hell for this man, Kevin Ray Underwood. In short, he fulfilled his fantasy of sexual assault, murder, and cannibalism on a child. The unfortunate victim was 10-year-old girl, Jamie Rose Bolin, who lived in the same apartment complex as Kevin. This interview was extremely graphic, and I had to cut a lot of the details out, as I, myself, really struggled to get through it. She was, uh, you know, had thin red hair. Uh, glasses. She's a little chubby. Now, going back to um, the plan, you, uh, yeah, so, you had the handcuffs and the duct tape. Yeah, so what I was going to do is I was going to uh, 
you know, like I said, yank them in there, strain them, and if, if it was a kid, I was going to just make them sit there and watch some porn for and then I was going to have sex with them. And then... Were you going to try to make it, turn them on the porn, make it voluntary? I was, you know, kind of hoping that would happen, but I, you know, figured it probably wouldn't. So you think that you would have to do it by force? Yeah, mo most likely. Okay. And then, you know, the uh, after the sex, it would turn kind of violent. I'd start uh, kind of torturing them a little and stuff like that. And I, the the, the uh, torture was kind of a late addition because at first I wanted the body to be pretty much unharmed because uh, what I was going to do after that then was I was going to, uh, while they were still alive and gagged, I was going to... Uh, drape them over the bathtub and cut off their head and uh, then hang them there and let the blood all drain out good and drained out and I was going to keep the body around for a couple of days I was going to set the head on my desk so it could like watch me and you know keep the corpse in my bed sleeping with it for a day or two and then I was going to start butchering them and cooking them did you buy any pots or any special things for that? Just the barbecue ske skewers and some meat tenderizer powder and a uh, hacksaw to cut open the head to get to the brain because I wanted to eat the brain and the heart and some of the organs. But yeah, she was a very trusting kid. If it hadn't been me, it could have ended up being someone else because like I said she just wandered into my apartment. But I didn't you know, force her in there or even ask her in. You know, when she first came in, I was like, oh, now's my chance. But, you know, then I had the same, no, I can't do it. And I just kind of struggled with myself the whole time she was in there. You put her on my head where you hit I was standing behind her, so, yeah, it was about, probably, was about, probably about like that, something okay. like that. Yeah, I was behind her, just whack. And she, you know, she's like, ow, and started crying. And she's like, oh, God, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, my God, I'm sorry. And just saying I'm sorry over and over mostly. And I, so I whacked her again. And. She jumped up, and you know I, I couldn't believe it didn't knock her out. I hit her. You know, it's, it's all kind of a blur once it started happening. But I hit her, I think three times, maybe four. But she was, I couldn't believe how strong she was. I barely held her down. Uh, I finally, I like to never got her down to the ground. I mean, I had to, you know, how I, I didn't want to choke her, because like I said, I wanted the body to be pretty much perfect. You know, I mean, we struggled. It, it took me probably 15, 20 minutes to kill her. Uh, and uh, then, you know, once I got her taped up, I drug her into the bedroom so I could open the front door and wheel her bike in. I hope that if there's one thing this video has taught you, is there is evil everywhere, even where you least expect it. We are only aware of the serial killers that have been caught. This has mentally been one of the hardest videos that I've had to put together, so I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments down below which interview stuck with you the most. If you did enjoy it, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and stay up to date with the daily uploads. Hopefully, I'll see you in the next one. What? Oh no!